I've lived in my tiny condo for almost 20 years now and I have no plans to move. In this video, I'm going to tell you all of the benefits as I see them of living in a tiny home, keeping in mind, of course, that we all have different priorities and lifestyles and life circumstances. So my decision may not be appropriate in all circumstances, but it is the best decision for me and the life that I want to lead and I am very happy in my tiny home. My condo is roughly 550 square feet and I live here with my husband and our dog. Lulu is a chihuahua though, so she doesn't take up much room at all. Although we had a teeny tiny rabbit smaller than Lulu and Truffle took up tons of space because we had a lot of supplies for him. So the size of the pet doesn't necessarily translate to how much square footage they need. But never Nevertheless, it is currently hubby, Lulu, and me in this tiny 550 square foot space. Another factor that plays a big part of why I love my home so much is the location. So I'm going to try to split that out in this video, not talk about the benefits of the location, but rather just the benefits of having a small home. The first thing that is very top of mind because I just finished my deep cleaning challenge, which I do every year leading up to the first day of spring, is that a small smaller home means there's less to clean and less to maintain. We have one bathroom, which means we only have to clean one bathroom, and having only 550 square feet means we don't need to vacuum as many areas, there's not as much room for clutter to accumulate. We still do manage to squeeze a lot of stuff into our condo, but having a small space because we don't want it to be too cluttered and too difficult to clean, we try to keep our possessions not to a minimum, but we try not to go overboard with it either. The other benefit to having a smaller space with only one bathroom is that we don't have to double up on toiletries or supplies or anything like that. We don't have as many rooms to furnish or rooms to decorate or rooms to, of course, clean. The second major benefit, which is always top of mind for me, it's just cheaper in general to have a smaller home. Because condo maintenance fees are based on square footage, our fees are lower than a comparable condo in the same building that is a higher square footage. So a condo that's double our size, say a thousand square feet, would have double our maintenance fee. I've already talked about a few other factors that would affect the cost of owning a home. Buying more stuff to furnish or decorate your home is also where we save because we don't really have a lot of space to furnish or to decorate. This condo was also less expensive to purchase and it was really, really less expensive because we bought it 20 years ago. But all things being equal, if you're looking for a home in the current environment, a smaller home will likely be less expensive than a larger home in the same area. And this means you might be able to find a home in a nicer area or a nicer neighborhood if you're willing to concede on the size a little bit. I'd say that buying a small home and living in a small home, being content in a small home, is probably one of the biggest factors that contributed to my financial independence. So being able to leave the corporate world, my full-time job, and now only working part-time. A large part of that lifestyle change is due to my decision to stay in a smaller home. Now, have I always wanted a small home? To be quite honest, I haven't really thought about it. I grew up for the first 14 years of my life as an only child, and it was just me and my dad, and we always lived in small apartments because it was just the two of us. We moved around a lot, and so so we may do with small apartments and I'm very used to it. So this is a very personal circumstance that makes me feel very comfortable in a small home. I feel very safe and secure, and I don't really have that desire to own a house, to own a bigger condo even. But that doesn't mean I didn't go through phases where I thought I wanted these things. I think it's natural when we're progressing in our careers, especially in our 20s and 30s, and when we have peers who are going through a lot of different life changes, things like getting married, having children, Children, upsizing homes, getting promotions, all of these milestones that we're supposed to want in society. So I'm not immune to that. I definitely went through a phase where I really wanted to climb the corporate ladder, not necessarily to have more responsibilities or become a people manager or anything like that, but I wanted the better title and I wanted the higher salary. And along with that, I wanted to hit some milestones too. I did get married, but hubby 
and I decided not to have children and I am so happy with that decision. I recorded a video, I think it was five years ago, on why I decided not to have kids and that video still rings true for me. I am five years older, I'm 45 right now and I have no regrets about my decision. And in terms of upsizing my home, I don't think I ever truly wanted to. But because a lot of people asked me about it, are you thinking of moving into a bigger home? Are you going to buy a bigger place? This is a great starter home, you could rent it out and use that income to do this and that. There's a lot of curiosity and maybe a little bit of unsolicited advice about what's next in the trajectory of a young person's life. Society puts a lot of pressure on young people to hit certain milestones and I think that did have me wondering, well, should I be moving to a bigger place and is there something wrong with me if I don't want a bigger home, if I don't want to buy a house, if I don't want all of the things that other people say they want, does that make me weird or broken? I grappled with this throughout my 20s and 30s and every time hubby and I were tempted to upsize our home, we always decided to stay here. We really love our home and it's enough space for us. As I alluded to, I moved around a lot as a child, so I never really had that stable, constant concept of home. And now that I'm here, I have this home that I love. I have zero desire to move. It's just such a hassle. It's such an expense. I don't know if I'm going to like it as much as my current home. So I am very, very content where I am. I wanted to mention a couple of other small benefits that might not be benefits for everyone, but for me, this works really well with the life that I want to lead. The first being that when Javi and I are home together, we're always kind of in the same space or at least within talking distance. There's no yelling in our home because we need to say something to someone upstairs or downstairs or two rooms away. We're always pretty much within earshot of each other and if not we usually just have to take like two steps to be in talking distance. It's not always roses to be in close proximity to someone. Sometimes conflicts do arise and so we do have to talk it through. We do have to communicate with each each other. We do have to coordinate in terms of getting ready because we only have one bathroom. So there's a lot of communication there and I think that benefits me and hubby because we're both such um, introverted, quiet people at times. But putting us in close proximity to each other means that we do have to communicate regularly and we also have to work on our communication because we have such different styles. So there's a certain amount of togetherness that I really enjoy about that, which is unusual because I really love my alone time. But we still get a lot of alone time because hubby works away from home and he also enjoys going to the gym. I go for a walk every day that's at least an hour long, so I am out of the condo. I've never really wished for or another room to go to. Instead, I just really love going outside for my walk. There's something about being outside that is very soothing to me. It helps me with my perspective and it clears my mind. The other thing that I really love about having a small space is that we use every inch of our condo regularly. Whereas if hubby and I were in a bigger home, there would probably be parts of the home that we don't use regularly. This is not a judgment on people who want to live in big homes or that do live in big homes. It's just for me personally, it feels a little wasteful to pay for a space that I'm only using a portion of regularly. So because we use every single area of the condo, that makes me feel really good. Having a small space and using every inch of it involves a lot of creativity, a lot of um, moving furniture around and tweaking things so they're more efficient, thinking about what to bring into the home and what to donate. These are all fun exercises in creativity that I really, really enjoy. I think those are all the things that I wanted to talk about in this video. If you live in a small home, I would love to hear from you on some of your tips and tricks and some of the benefits that you've noticed. If you want to downsize your home, I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoy a bigger home, I would also love to hear from you and some of the benefits that you notice. I'm always curious to know about other people's preferences, the way they like to live, the choices they make. I just find it really, really interesting. And I hope this video has helped with some of your 
your curiosity about what it's like to live in a tiny home. If you have any questions, just leave them down below and I will do my best to answer. I'll be back very soon with another video. Until then, please take care and bye for now.